So for wrestling fans like myself, this time of year is WrestleMania season. WrestleMania isn't actually until the first week of April, but it's all we wrestling fans are going to be talking about between now and then, mostly because it's all the WWE's TV shows are going to be talking about between now and then. But I don't want to talk to you about this year's upcoming WrestleMania. I probably will at some point, but right now I want to take you back to a past WrestleMania, all the way back to WrestleMania 4 in 1988. The focal point of this particular WrestleMania was a one-night single elimination tournament to determine a new WWF champion, which was necessary due to the championship being vacated following a controversial match between Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant, where Andre won thanks to a corrupt imposter referee who was the identical twin of the referee who had actually been assigned to officiate the match. Because, in case you didn't know, pro wrestling especially in the WWF slash WWE, has always been nuts. A rematch between Hogan and Andre was scheduled for WrestleMania in the second round of the tournament, and prior to the match, Hogan joined Mean Gene Okerlund backstage for an interview to hype the match, an interview that wound up being one of Hogan's more memorable promos, and which has only grown more hilarious in hindsight. He starts out with a fairly standard line about how he's gonna settle the score once and for all with Andre the Giant and prove that he can beat him, but then... Things take a bit of a turn as Hogan fantasizes about body slamming Andre so hard that it triggers an earthquake which severs the east coast of the United States from the continent from New York all the way down to Florida, causing Andre and everyone else to fall into the ocean. Oh yes, at this point I should also tell you that WrestleMania 4 was held in what is now called Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, which for the event was billed as Trump Plaza because it was sponsored by the nearby Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino, and Donald Trump was in attendance in the front row. As Hogan continued unspooling his body slam-induced continental earthquake scenario, he described all his fans, his Hulkamaniacs, struggling not to drown as they fell into the ocean. Hogan described Donald Trump clinging to the top of the Trump Plaza with one arm, holding on to his family with his other arm, trying to keep from being pulled down into the watery depths. Thank God Donald Trump's a Hulkamaniac, Hogan declared. He'll know enough to let go of his materialistic possessions, hang on to the wife and kids, dog paddle for his life all the way to safety, but Donald, if something happens and you run out of gas, just hold on to the largest back in the world, and I'll backstroke all of us to safety. Like I said, just taken on its own terms, judged in its original context, this is a memorable promo. Over the top, and utterly demented, a prime example of what WWF wrestling was like in the 1980s, or as I like to call it, the cocaine era. But 36 years of hindsight, and the presence of Donald Trump makes it even funnier. A few things jump out at me when I watch this interview here in 2024. First, I feel compelled to ask, did Donald Trump ask for this? As with everything else he's ever done, Trump used his involvement in WrestleMania as an opportunity for self-promotion. There's a famous publicity photo of Trump standing between Hogan and Andre holding up the WWF Championship belt. His name was all over the event. Did he ask Hogan, or maybe ask his good buddy Vince McMahon, to ask Hogan to mention him in an interview? And this was the result? If Trump did ask for Hogan to mention him in a promo, how specific was the request? Did he just say, have Hogan name drop me? I don't care what he says, just as long as it makes me look good. And Hogan said, I'll come up with something, brother, snorted a line of coke through the rolled up hundred dollar bill Vince McMahon had just handed him and walked over to Mean Gene Okerlund and that's what came out? Or was Trump like, I want you to envision a catastrophic natural disaster where the eastern seaboard breaks off from the rest of the country and Atlantic City sinks into the ocean and there I am clinging to the top of the beautiful Trump Plaza casino and hotel and I'm holding on to my wife and children. You don't need to mention their names. I don't know them anyway. And I let go of the Trump Plaza Casino and Hotel because saving my family is more important to me in this outlandish fictional scenario. Also, what's Miss Elizabeth's deal? Is she available? 
Do I need to clear it with the Macho Man first? Second, how funny is the idea that Trump would let go of his material possessions in order to <laughs> save his family? Come on. I think the image of Trump even holding on to them, even making an effort to save them, is pretty fucking hilarious. If there's a massive earthquake and Trump Plaza is sinking into the sea and Donald Trump is holding on for dear life to the top of the building, he's holding on with both hands. He's hugging that building like it's an American flag. There's no way he's even thinking about his wife and children. If he survives, it'll be at least a day or two before it occurs to him to ask if they made it or not. Not. Third, and funniest of all to me, so the premise of Hogan's promo is that Donald Trump is a family man who loves his wife and kids and would let go of his materialistic possessions in order to save them from a flood which Hulk Hogan caused by body slamming Andre the Giant, right? The only thing is, Trump's kids aren't even there. See for yourself. Trump and his wife at the time, Ivana, are seated front row opposite the hard camera. Trump is extremely visible for the entire event. He's right there. His children are nowhere to be seen. They aren't sitting next to him or their mother. His sons, Donald Jr. and Eric, were 10 and 4, respectively, and his daughter Ivanka was 6. You think they might have enjoyed sitting front row with their dad at WrestleMania? Well, too bad, kids! Maybe they were there, just somewhere else. I don't know. All I know is they were nowhere near their father while he was on camera, which was pretty much the entire event. You know who was sitting next to Donald and Ivana, though? This guy. He sat next to the Trumps on Ivana's right during WrestleMania 4 and was also seen standing next to and talking to Donald Trump throughout the evening. His name is Robert Liboudi. He was a mobster! Three years after this, he was banned from New Jersey casinos due to his suspected ties to John Gotti. He and his daughter sat in the front row at WrestleMania 4 as guests of Donald Trump. No seats for the kids, but plenty of room for the associate of the Gambino family. Thirty years later, while running for president, Trump would deny knowing Labuti. He told reporters he wouldn't recognize Labuti if he saw him. And Trump would no doubt say the same thing about Don Jr. and Eric, so maybe it's not that big of a deal after all. Despite the WWF title tournament and the Hogan-Andre rematch, WrestleMania 4 is not especially well regarded today, but I'll always remember it for that backstage promo where, a year before the WWF officially admitted it, Hulk Hogan tried to get us to believe that Donald Trump would choose to protect his family instead of himself and his assets, and in doing so demonstrated that pro wrestling is definitely fake.